and good afternoon and welcome to our normal Friday Lunch and Learn with me, Dr. Polly Heil Mealy at Abundant Health and Wellness. Now, we are located in downtown Humble at Main Street and Avenue C. So if you're in the neighborhood, come in and say hello and we'd love to see you. So I want to talk to you today about the coronavirus. Now, it's all over the news. And I used to live in Britain, and they would say, everybody's got their knickers in a twist. And what that means is everybody is overreacting about this virus. Now, I just wanna tell you a little bit about viruses. Everybody has them. They are latent in your body. Some of them are very beneficial. We did a Facebook Live a couple of weeks ago and talked about beneficial viruses that everybody has. Some viruses are not beneficial, and the coronavirus is not a particularly deadly virus. So I don't know what all the hype is uh, in the media, and I think it is a manipulative technique because I believe they probably are coming out with a vaccine pretty soon. So I just want to tell you a little bit about the coronavirus, and you might be saying, but oh my goodness, Dr. Polly, people are dying. Yes, people are dying. So the first 17 people that died with this virus, uh, 13 were men, and uh, four, four were women, yes. They were all older, they were all older than 45, and they all had other health issues. Now I'm reading from my computer because I have a lot of papers on my desk and I wanna make sure and get this right. So the youngest was 48 years old uh, and she died after a month of having this virus. The two oldest cases were two 89 year old people. Many had underlying conditions like cirrhosis of the liver, hypertension, diabetes, and Parkinson's disease. Many spent more than a week in hospitals and some were undergoing treatment already for a month or longer, okay? While much of the virus remains unknown, medical experts found some positive signs in the fact that the disease did not appear to be killing young or otherwise healthy individuals. So if you are healthy, this is not something that you need to be worried about. And so, you know, I don't know why everybody is just all in, up in arms about this because if you are healthy, you're going to be okay. Now, we all have an immune system. I'm going to talk to you about your immune system and how you can help yourself avoid this virus. We come into viruses every day. Now, I just, I'm gonna change my screen on my computer because I saw this this morning and I liked it. And so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna read some things to you. So you're gonna see the side of my face, but I'm, I'm, I'm watching my, my computer so I can show you. Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses that are common among animals. In rare cases, they are what scientists call zoonotonic, meaning they can be transmitted from animals to humans. The viruses can make people sick, usually with a mild, mild to moderate upper respiratory tract symptom. Mild to moderate. We're not talking, you know, uh, any kind of disaster or catastrophe here, okay? It is very, very similar to the common cold. Now, do I want to have the common cold? No, I do not. Do I want to have the coronavirus? No, I do not. Okay, so what do you do to protect yourself? You know, do you get into this, you know, hyperbolic exchange uh, with people just going crazy because some people have died? The people that died were already sick, okay? Your immune system can only just take so much. We want you to be careful, we want you to be protected, but we don't want you to get all crazy about this because it's nothing more than symptoms like the common cold. This is what you get. You get a runny nose, you get a headache, a cough, a sore throat, a fever, and a general feeling of unwell. Okay, so that's not a big deal. That's not something to get all excited about. It says for those with weakened immune systems, the elderly and the very young, there is a chance 
that the virus could cause a lower and much more serious respiratory tract illness like pneumonia or bronchitis. And yes, this is true. If you are very old and feeble, then it's probably gonna be harder for you and you need to seek medical attention first. But if you are like most of the people that watch uh, our programs, you are taking care of yourself, you are healthy, you are doing everything that you know to do. And so if you come into this uh, contact with this virus, it may, if your immune system is not where it needs to be, you may get a little bit of a sniffle and you may run a little bit of a fever, but it's probably not something that's going to kill you, okay? It says it spreads from coughing and sneezing, close personal contact, touching, shaking hands, that kind of thing, touching an object that someone else has touched. So what is the most, the most dirty object that you are around? It's not the toilet seat. I'm just gonna tell you that, it's not that. It is the elevator button. It is the um, escalator when you go up and down the escalator and it is your cell phone. So those things are filthy, filthy, filthy. So if you are out in public and you're having to do those, uh, touch those things, just make sure that you wash your hands because you don't know who has come before you. And we're in the winter season and so flu and viruses are all over the place and we need to protect ourselves anyway, okay? Uh, prevention, wash your hands often with soap and water. Avoid touching your eyes and your nose and your mouth. Now, why is that? That is because your immune system, your biggest guardian of the body is your skin, your skin, your epidermis. Nothing penetrates that skin, okay, because, unless there's a cut or there's an abrasion or there's some kind of a, of a wound there. Now, Obviously, your eyes, your mouth, your nose, you've got mucous membranes, viruses can go in, attack, and go into the body that way. So we're very, very careful about touching our face, touching our eyes, touching our nose, especially if we've been in a high target environment. So you're not gonna wanna be playing with your cell phone and then wipe your nose. You're not gonna wanna be shaking hands with somebody and then touch your face. You have to be mindful of this. Uh, some people carry uh, antibacterial lotion in their purse for that. Some people have, you know, they just, they don't touch people, they fist bump and all that kind of thing. Whatever you do, just protect yourself and just be mindful. This is a virus. It's not going to kill you unless you are already sick. Now, we wanna talk about the immune system. What is the immune system and how the immune system protects you? Because if you can work with it, and if a lot of it, you're gonna be surprised, it's not supplements and it's not drugs, it's lifestyle. And so if you work on your lifestyle, you work on your diet, you work on sleep hygiene, then you're going to have a really, really strong immune system and you're not gonna have these problems. So I'm just going to, um, this is an article that I found and it's called The Complex interaction of the organs, cells, and microbes that keep us alive, though very few of us understand it. So um, I thought it was very appropriate uh, because everybody, like I say, is everybody's just like in a little panic, chicken little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling because we've got this virus. If you belong to a subset of people that are sick, yes, be concerned. But if you are young and healthy and you take care of yourself, then I don't really see that it's anything to worry about. And um, we really need to keep stress levels down because stress levels uh, hamper our immune system. So we don't wanna be all hot and bothered about something that's not really all that big of a deal. So our immune system, as I said before, is the physical barrier, the skin, but there is also a lymphatic organic network. Now, your lymphatic system, so for some of you that don't know, when you have a blister, that clear fluid inside that blister is part of your lymphatic system. That is lymph fluid. If you get a cut, you get the pus and the scab, that also is your lymphatic fluid. White blood cells travel in the lymphatic fluid. You've got lymph nodes, you've got them in your neck, you've got them in your armpits, you've got them up and down your spine, you've got them in your groin, and you've got them behind the knees. These are where your lymph nodes live, and your lymph nodes 
their job is to uh, filter the blood, filter the lymphatic fluid so that it kills all the microbes, the germs, the viruses, and that kind of thing. So if we are healthy, if we exercise, exercise is a big deal. Why is that? Because exercise moves the lymphatic fluid through the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes have in them macrophages, and phagocytes, I know those are big, big words, think of it as little Pac-Man creatures that just chomp up all the bacteria, the parasites, and the viruses that get into our system. So if we're not exercising, moving those long bones, moving your arms, moving your legs, heavy breathing, then you're not gonna be moving your lymphatic fluid, so you're not going to give your lymphatic system what it needs to be able to kill these invaders, okay? So you've got your thymus and you've got your spleen. Now your spleen is a wonderful organ and it makes your red blood cells and your white blood cells and it helps the bone marrow. So if you are one of those sad people that has an immune issue and you're not well, we've got supplements here that will go into those organs and help replenish their vitality so that you can make good white blood cells and red blood cells and bone marrow and all that kind of stuff. Your T cells, your B cells, your killer cells, all of that is made in the bone marrow. And so if this is something that you need, we've got this. So don't stick your head in the sand and say, oh, I've got XYZ disease, so I'm going to be a um, victim of this. No, let's get that body working the way that body needs to do so that you're able to overcome this, okay? So what they have found in kind of recent years, I'd say the last 30 years, is that 70% of your immune system is in the gut, okay? Your gut, that means the mucous membrane from your mouth to your hiney, okay? That is one continuous tube of mucous membrane. When we eat poorly, when we harbor uh, microbes such as fungus or candida, it eats into that uh, lining, and when it eats into that lining, that lining becomes compromised. When that lining becomes compromised, then we are more susceptible to viruses and other kinds of infectious agents. Now, what you may or may not know is that every healthy individual has three to five pounds of beneficial bacteria in the gut, okay? That, that's kind of, think of a bag of sugar. A bag of sugar is five pounds, okay? You, if you are healthy, you will have approximately five pounds of good beneficial bacteria in your gut. So what does that mean? That means if I have never had antibiotics, I probably have that. If I have had antibiotics, even one course of antibiotics, it absolutely decimates all of that bacteria. So what do we do? Do we not do antibiotics? Well, it depends on what the case is. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you, you just have to, and thank God we've got them. But if you have to do antibiotics and you have to go back in and feed and seed plant the good bacteria again, and you have to do it on purpose, and you have to do it with a strain that is strong enough and in a spore form so it um, survives digestion because all of these little microbes live where? They live in your small intestine and in your large intestine. And so if you have something that is cheap, over the counter, that kind of thing, it's probably not in spore form. And so the hydrochloric acid that you have in your tummy is going to destroy it and it can't get to where it needs to be in order to repopulate the gut. So that's really, really important. Um, if you have food allergies, if you have constipation, if you have diarrhea, if you do not move your bowels two to three times a day, uh, then you probably don't have a good gut microbiome, okay? 70% of your immune system is in the gut. So if you're like one of these people that we talked about a while ago that has cirrhosis of the liver and hypertension and diabetes and all that kind of stuff, then you're not going to have a good microbiome. You're just not going to. Sickness and disease only come in when our protection is compromised. So think of this. Um, I remember watching um, 
Star Trek, I'm gonna get confused here, but Star Trek as a child, and they would put up their force field and the Klingons couldn't get to them, right? Because they would shoot their whatever and it would just bounce off the shield. Well, that's kind of the way we are. We have an immune system. And if that immune system is working the way it needs to, then these viruses and germs and whatever, they fire at us, but our immune system takes care of it. And so it doesn't bother us. It doesn't have a foothold in there that it can incubate and take over, okay? So if we've got gut issues, and I will just tell you, almost everybody that comes in to see me has gut issues. And why is that? Well, that's because we overuse antibiotics. And you might say, well, Dr. Polly, I never have had antibiotics. Well, good for you. I'm glad. Um, but if you eat uh, commercial dairy, if you eat commercially processed beef and chicken, guess what? All of those food uh products have injected antibiotics. And so you're getting treatment of antibiotics when you eat your food. So unless you're buying um, organic, 100% organic dairy and meat products, you are getting antibiotics in through your food source. And so it is killing the gut microbiome. We can definitely repair that. You've got to quit eating a lot of things that are causing inflammation. Now, inflammation is really, really important. Most people think that inflammation is a bad thing, that, information, that inflammation is something that we need to avoid. I don't think that. I think we need to avoid chronic inflammation, but inflammation is something that will protect you. So what is inflammation? Anything that is hot, that is swollen, that is wet. Okay, so what happens when we come down with a cold? We'll get a runny nose, we'll get a fever, we'll get hot, okay? What is the job of the fever? The job of the fever is to burn up the virus. The job of the fever is to burn up the germ. That's the job. So when we rush out and we get antibiotics or we take ibuprofen or whatever we take to make the fever go away because we're deadly afraid of a fever, then we're doing our immune system an in service because our immune system is trying to attack that invader and we're stopping that process. Now, we need to be smart. If your fever goes above 103, then we need to really pay attention and see what's going on with that. But really, if you take care of yourself, you stay hydrated, you rest, your body's going to be able to recover and your immune system, if you are healthy, is gonna be able to do what it needs to do to combat any kind of sickness and disease. Now, I've been doing quite a few Facebook uh, lives in the last few weeks about different herbal preparations that we have that are natural antiviral, antimicrobial, and at the first sign, when I feel like, and sometimes, I mean, I come, people come in and they see me, they sit across this desk just like you are, and I will feel, and uh, y'all might think I'm crazy, but I will sometimes feel this person has germs that are communicable. And so when I feel that, right, I do not touch my eyes, my nose, my mouth, I definitely go and wash my hands, if I feel like it has invaded my space, I will definitely start taking these natural antiviral antibiotics because it needs to stop the infection before it is noticeable. So I am very, very aware of what's going on in my field. Now my field is who I am from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and it's also the surrounding air and, and everything around me. And you, you know that you have a field because somebody can walk behind you and the hair on the back of your neck will prickle, right? So you have a field. If you tune into that, if you pay attention to that, you're gonna know when someone comes into your presence, comes into your, your area, that is germy, okay? So we love germy people. But we protect ourselves by making sure that our immune system does what it needs to do. So, inflammation is supposed to be temporary. It can also be hard on the body if it rages for too long. So, a chronic inflammatory state 
will lead to an autoimmune disease. We do not want that, okay? So diabetes is a state of chronic inflammation. So if we get our inflammatory response down on your blood work, now some doctors don't order this on the blood work, but I like to see this. It is the C-reactive protein. If you have a high C-reactive protein, then you have ongoing chronic inflammation in your body. Now, the reference range is below one. So if you're looking at your blood work or you get your blood work out, you will see uh, CRP, or it could be C-reactive protein, whatever your lab says. You should be under one, but you know what? We've had people come in that had 10 and 12 as their numbers. They are in a constant state of inflammatory uh, responses. And when that happens, it actually breaks down the body. It causes aging. It causes autoimmune issues and it causes cancer. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to have that at all, okay? This doctor says almost everything is inflammatory from dementia to cancer. If you dig deep, you start to find that all disease has an inflammatory foundation. I was surprised a few years ago hearing about decreased bone density and osteoporosis turns out to be an inflammatory process as well. Everything might be inflammatory at some level. So we want to get inflammatory uh, processes out of our environment. So this doctor, her name is Dr. Terry Walls. I think it's a girl. Um, I think it's a girl doctor, uh, we'll see. Um, often what people need are just diet lifestyle changes. She's an integrative medical doctor. That means she has gone to medical school, but she also uses holistic practices and she uses drugs as a last resort. And so what she says is if she can get people to change their lifestyle, that that's about all they need and their body recovers. So um, she says here, all the drugs, chemicals, and antibiotics we take have impacted the microbiome. It has changed how the immune system views food, okay? So the oldest known book of traditional Chinese medicine is called the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine, okay? It explains that the way to defend against seasonal illnesses is with abundant internal energy known as qi, okay? The book says that if you are full of good qi, that no evils can invade. And that's what I was talking about, that force field, okay? So let me break that down so that you can understand it a little bit better. We, every organ has a vibrational frequency. Every system has a vibrational frequency. So your immune system, your digestive system, your respiratory system, your reproductive system, your emotional system, it all has a vibrational frequency. And um, you know, for those of you who think I'm getting over into new age and that kind of thing, this is not a new age concept. This is actually a biblical concept because Jesus said what? That he was light. What is light? Light is energy. When God spoke, the world into existence, right? Words are sound energy. When God breathed into Adam, Adam became a living soul. So we have the actual divine energy that God has. So segue over into your organs. When you come in and you see me, we check the vibrational frequencies of all of your organs to see where you are. If everything is functioning, at the right level, you cannot get sick, all right? It's like you've got that force field and you're good. Sad to say, I have very few people that come in that function at the right level. Think of a symphony. You've got your strings, you've got your percussion, you've got your horns, you've got your, uh, your woods, your, your oboe, your clarinet, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you've got cymbals, you've got, all, you've got all those different beautiful instruments. 
if those instruments are not tuned to each other, what happens? You've got a cacophony of sound. It, it hurts your ears, it's not pleasant, it's irritating and all that kind of stuff. But if everybody's tuned up and playing the same key and everybody's on the same page, it is absolutely beautiful. So beautiful that it'll bring you to tears if you are a music lover. And this is exactly the way the body works. The body needs to be in tune and the body wants to be in tune. When it is in tune with itself, any invaders that come in, you're able to take care of it because your body is going to work the way your body needs to work, and that's just a brilliant thing. It's absolutely fabulous, okay? In her clinical research, Walls has been able to show that lifestyle factors can have an, a profound effect on immune health. The four most significant factors she has found are eating vegetables, having emotional connections, and I would say good emotional connections, not negative emotional connections, um, getting outside, and why do we have to get outside? Because we need that good vitamin D, and I did a uh, webinar on vitamin D not that long ago, so if you guys don't understand vitamin D, you need to look that up, and sufficient sleep. She says, when we don't get enough sleep, our immune cells are nowhere near as effective at protecting us against the various viruses that lay dormant in our brain and in our body. That's when these latent viruses can turn on and lead to chronic health problems. Now, I will just tell you, stress is a killer. As long as you are at peace, as long as you are resting, as long as you are eating properly and loving your people, right? Not having a whole lot of stress, your immune system is going to rise to the occasion. When you are under prolonged stress, as in negative family, um, you know, drama, or you've got work drama, or whatever kind of drama you have, um, it causes the immune system to break down, it causes uh, your, your body not to be in tune, and it causes these latent viruses to rear their ugly head and to become a, a real threat to your health. And so we don't want to do that. So these four things everybody can do. Everybody can choose to love. Everybody can choose to have good sleep. Everybody can choose to eat vegetables, right? Everybody can choose to get outside and exercise and get that vitamin D. These are all choices that we make. We don't need to be worried about things that are out there unless our immune system is compromised. If you are compromised in your immune system, you need to come and see me because I can help you. We have had years and years of helping people with immune system issues and it takes time and it is expensive, but guess what? We can reverse that. At. Your body knows how to heal itself, and that's what this is all about. So don't be concerned about the coronavirus. I don't want you to go to China. I don't think that's a smart thing, okay? Travel, that long of a travel, it's going to be stressful, and so your immune system is going to be weakened, so just don't do that. Other than that, if somebody comes into your presence that is germy, don't touch your face. Get some antimicrobial lotion or go wash your hands. Make sure you're good to yourself, that you have things at home, right? Your natural antibiotics, your natural antivirals. Now, get, let me just give you uh, a couple of things that are really good. Liquid silver is amazing, okay? We only recommend one brand and you can get it off of our website. And the reason we recommend that brand is because it is 20 parts per million. It is the strongest silver that you can buy. It will not turn you blue, so we like that. And it is a natural antibiotic and it is a natural antiviral. If you are in a office building where everybody is sick, you want to put some in a spray or spray it up your nostril. You want to take a teaspoon or a tablespoon of it every few hours and it will kill any viruses that you happen to inhale. We've got that Pure Herbs formula, which is called IVH, which stands for infection and viruses. Whenever we come down with something or we feel just a little bit icky, we will grab that bottle of IVH and we'll start taking it every two hours. I set my phone every two hours to take a dose of that and by the end of the day, whatever discomfort I had is gone. 
Um, we also recommend that you take wild oregano oil. Now, not wild oregano essential oil. We want you to do that in the diffuser. But we do have a really, really good 85% Carvacol wild oregano oil that is a natural antiviral. And I'll take one of those. I may even take two of those every two hours because I don't have time to be sick. I don't want to be sick. And I have not been sick in many, many years and maybe even many decades because I do what I need to do. God heals me, right? I believe for divine healing. I eat my vegetables. I sleep well. I try to maintain good emotional uh, relationships. And I take my vitamin D. I do that Sol Ray D I was talking about a few weeks ago, and I don't just do nine sprays a day. I probably do like 16 sprays a day. And why is that? Because my work is pretty stressful. You know, if you're sitting across my table from me and your heart is breaking and you're telling me about all these negative things that the doctor says, you know what, I'm gonna be crying right with you. And that's very, very stressful. I can't afford to be sick. I don't wanna be sick. And so I take the precautions that I need to do so that I am able to be healthy, right? I have every opportunity, just like you do, to get a virus, to get a germ, to get a parasite. I am mindful of, of what enters into my field. I am mindful of my eating. If I, you know, we're going away, you know, for the weekend, we're going hunting or whatever we're doing, guess what? I'm not eating organic food. I'm probably eating Dairy Queen steak fingers. I'm just being honest with you. That's probably what I'm doing. Cause we're at the Dare Lease and there's, you know, you can't cook there. So I did not pack a lunch and that might be what I do. If I start to feel sick, I know that it's because I did not eat well and so I'll up the regimen so that I don't get sick. So be mindful of what you're doing. Be mindful if you're eating sugar. If you're eating sugar, you are feeding yeast and fungus. We don't want you to do that. So hopefully this has kind of given everybody a breath. Oh, I don't have to worry about all the hype that's on the TV. I can keep my body healthy. I can rest, I can get my vitamin D, I can eat my vegetables, and I can be at peace in my situations, okay? So I hope that this has helped you and that you're not like running around. Um, if you don't have antivirals, if you don't have natural antibiotics in your cabinet, then you can come by and see us because we do, and we love teaching you how to take care of yourself so that you can be well, you and your children, okay? So that's all from me today. It is the weekend. Be careful. Be good, be restful, and have a good time. I'll talk to you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.